let's do some 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 practice uh, for the eccentric flow through a conduit okay uh, but before we go into solving equation let me uh, summarize again what we have learned so far we have learned some of the ideal gas equation uh, that is applicable for the that we used and applicable for the high velocity uh, compressible gas uh, here we have a uh, equation of state we have a cp and cv relationship we also have a speed of sound equation uh, we derive this one and then the uh, isentropic uh, change uh, expansion of ideal gas equation as well when we um, address the isentropic flow we uh, manage to drive a four correlation we have a velocity relationship we have a temperature relationship pressure relationship and density relationship and uh, to be able to calculate the mass flow rate we develop a hypothetical condition uh, of a critical point and then uh, using a mass balance we manage to drive equation that find out the ratio what will be the ratio of area at point one to the critical point and then using also a mass balance uh, relationship we can uh, uh, obtain the mass flux relationship so this is the first example nitrogen in a storage with a pressure of 700 kilopascal and temperature of 400 degree uh, kelvin enters a converging diverging nozzle determine the temperature pressure and the critical velocity in the nozzle so here converging and diverging no nozzle basically telling us that the flow is isentropic uh, and then we know here from this condition that the 700 kilopascal and 400 kelvin is the condition at the reservoir so uh, also another thing is that uh, the question is a critical velocity the critical velocity here must be a velocity at a critical condition so it's a phi star since the mesh uh, mesh number equal to one we know that the question is actually asking what is, is the sonic velocity at at the point in the nozzle uh, so i try to make an illustration about uh, what is the physical meaning of the problem here and then uh, we know that this is nitrogen so we need to get the information appropriately for the nitrogen um, nitrogen then has a k value of 1.4 i think m for nitrogen is supposed to be 28 here uh, you need to check back uh, again i think you need to revise this one correctly uh, so to get a temperature easy uh, it is the we use the temperature relationship we know the mesh number so so we just substitute all of the parameters into the temperature uh, relationship and uh, pressure relationship we use the uh, isentropic change of ideal gas equation to find out the p star of that and the critical velocity uh, of course the speed of sound uh, that is equal uh, uh, to, to to this equation uh, so by putting all of the parameters into the equation you will find out that this uh, this problem okay note here that for nitrogen i think the solution here is not correct the m is supposed to be 20 28 and then the others can can it should be changed okay it's a typo error okay let's go to another example uh, air at the reservoir with a pressure of 200 and 6.7 kilopascal and temperature of 366.67 kelvin flows through a duct the flow is isentropic at mass flow rate of 4.5359 kilogram per second what are the cross section area temperature pressure at a critical point so that is the condition here i use the illustration we used to derive the equation so you have a three wave valve uh, here uh, the okay what is that assumption here this is the critical so we know that at critical uh, point here the velocity equal to c speed of sound mesh number equal to one and we also have the pressure uh, the pressure critical pressure temperature pressure density pressure and at point one okay i know this is not addressed in this problem but you can all, all, always have another 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 conduit that link to the pressure and 
Uh, remember the concept of critical is a, a, that's a hypothetical condition uh, so that we'll be able to uh, the assumption that we'll be able to address the condition at any 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 other point in the in the conduit and the other condition there is m at one here is the same as the mass as, uh, at the critical point of that uh, just just to, to be remember uh, you will need to know this concept when you address the following problems uh, then we get the physical properties data of air. We have K 1.4. You check it from the table. You get a, 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 a molar mass of air, and you get a universal gas constant. Okay. So first of all, we try to get information more about uh, the critical condition. We get a density here. Next, uh, next we can use the temperature relationship to find out the temperature at the critical point. Uh, we use the density relationship to find out the density at the uh, critical point and then use the ideal gas equation to find out the pressure at the critical point and lastly uh, we can calculate the critical area uh, by using the m data using the m data and then use we can use the pressure and the temperature of the reservoir New example, uh, air at the reservoir with a pressure of 206.7 kPa and temperature uh, 366.67 Kelvin flows eccentrically through a duct at mass flow rate of 4.5359 kg per second. What are the temperature, pressure, mesh number, and cross-section area at a point in the duct where the velocity equal to uh, that value? So, uh, this, is, uh, this is an example uh, the same as the one before, but instead of asking what will be the condition at the critical point, it is asking the condition in, uh, in, a, uh, in a, somewhere in the conduit, okay, in a duct. So, uh, remember when we derive the equation, we assume the same mass velocity. So, the mass velocity here is actually the same. Uh, so the mass velocity, uh, mass velocity in the critical uh, point here is the same as the one in the conduit of that. Uh, so after having uh, a correct illustration of the system here, then we get the properties of the air. Then we apply appropriate relationship. Here I start with uh, finding the density in the reservoir and we get the uh, temperature at point one here by using the temperature the velocity relationship uh, in the isentropic uh, flow equation next is uh, we then uh, get the uh, the sonic velocity uh, at point one to get the mesh number at point one equal to 1.282 here to find out the density, we use the density relationship, uh, uh, and then to find out the pressure, we can use the uh, ideal gas e equation at point one. Another way of obtaining the uh, pressure is you can also use the pressure relationship between the two point uh, point reservoir at point one. Uh, to be able to uh, get the mass. Uh, area at point one so we then need to find out what will be the area at the critical point because in the to find out the area at point one we need to con uh, we need to uh, compare it with, with the area at the critical uh, actually exactly using this equation so you cannot apply this equation if you don't know the a star of that so what we do next in this is that we try to find out the hypothetically there is a a conduit there, there is a nozzle from the reservoir that exactly has okay that exactly has the mesh number equal to, to one and having the mass for uh, a mass flow rate uh, equal to point one equal to point one here that's why we can safely assume the m in the critical here equal to m here that is basically an assumption okay uh, the assumption that is valid because we use that assumption to derive the equation so then by, uh, by, by, by applying this equation, we find out the critical area and then the area at point one can be calculated using the area relationship. Okay, next problem. 
uh, next example helium gas is discharged discharged from a container tank to a receiver through a 2 cm diameter of convergent divergent nozzle the container has a pressure of 300 kPa and temperature of minus 10 degrees C what is the maximum flow rate of this process and what is the maximum pressure of the receiver okay uh, listen carefully so before we end up with this condition, let, let me explain what actually happening here, okay? Uh, so, imagine the nozzle start to open. So, what happened is, the gas, uh, the, the gas here will start to flow through the nozzle, okay, at low velocity, okay? And then it will increase, because it, it cannot go immediately at the, 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 the top velocity. It will increase, 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 until it reach the maximum. So what is that maximum? Remember the concept of the choking we discussed before. It will reach the maximum velocity at mesh number equal to 1, which is actually, it is the critical uh, velocity. That will be the maximum flow rate. To be able to flow from point here, point reservoir to the receiver, uh, of course, when, when, when it started, the receiver pressure here probably equal to a uh, very low pressure. As you flow the gases to the receiver, the receiver might have okay, higher pressure. What will be the highest pressure here? The highest pressure allowed in the receiver must be equal to pressure in the flow here, which is equal to the peak, peak critical. So that's the basic concept. Uh, so the next uh, question then, uh, maybe you have uh, some some problem like this. So when the pressure uh, the pressure and the receiver reach the same as the uh, critical pressure, so you can still have a mass velocity a maximum mass velocity equal to the to the to the mass number equal to one. But if the pressure here is higher than the critical pressure, you will have then less. Uh, uh, less, uh, you will have a velocity of less than a uh, mesh number here. So that's how to imagine the process here. So uh, this is the illustration of the system there. Uh, you then uh, obtain the properties of the helium gas. This is monoatomic, so you get a K equal to 1.67. The mass, molar mass equal to 4 gram per mole, and we always use the same constant uh, gas. And then what we do next is to calculate the reservoir uh, density here. I just do it to, to, to know what will be the density at this condition. Might be it's not really uh, applicable in the following calculation. So remember this is the choking problem. The choking problem is when uh, the flow reach the maximum, which is at the critical condition in the nozzle. So we get the area and we can calculate mass from the mass flux relationship at the critical condition. What will be the maximum receiver pressure? Uh, as I discussed before, it starts from when, when the flow starts, the, the, the pressure probably here starts from very low, it increases, increases, increases. And the only way to reach the maximum is when the pressure here doesn't exceed the pressure in this condition. Remember, the pressure here is the uh, critical pressure, so the pressure here must be a critical pressure as well. That's why we can use the uh, uh, correlation. Uh, given here. So, uh, you might have a case that the pressure here is above the critical pressure. In that condition, the flow rate should be uh, lower than the uh, uh, lower than mesh number equal to 1, lower than the sonic velocity. Uh, there's another example. Uh, compressed air in a tank is allowed to escape to the atmosphere through a smooth insulated pipe. Air flows steadily at a mass flow rate of 5 kg per second. The temperature and absolute pressure in the tank are constant at 90 degrees C and 301.3 and kPa respectively. Determine temperature, pressure, mesh, mesh number, uh, the diameter at section A with the air velocity of 100 m per second. Again, the first thing to do here is to make an illustration about the system. So here, uh, I just use the one given in the tutorial box. Uh, we have the pressure at the condition here given uh, pressure in the reservoir. And we know the velocity of the uh, mass velocity is uh, 5 kg per second. We know the, mm, 
the linear velocity of the gas at point A is 100 meter per second. Of course, at point, point A, it has properties of pressure, temperature, and density. Uh, and this is an air. So after having uh, this system illustration, then you get the properties of air, K equal to 1.4. We get this one from the table. R in this uh, lecture always constant. We use the universal value of 8.314 Joule per mole Kelvin. And this is the molar mass of the air, 29, average molar mass of air, 29 gram per mole. So, uh, next, uh, we know the velocity there. So, it's quite easy to uh, use the, the, the velocity relationship to find out the temperature at point A. Three, five, we get here 358.0 Kelvin. So, we get the temperature. The pressure of there, we can use a pressure relationship. Uh, or you can use the isentropic uh, equation, uh, pressure for the isentropic ex expansion equation, uh, because we know the uh, temperature of both sides already. Uh, then uh, mesh number. To be able to find a mesh number, you need to find the sonic velocity first. So since the temperature here is known, we use the equation that use the temperature at point A. We get the sonic velocity 379.06 meter per second. And then we apply the match equation to get the, uh, the, the match number of that. Uh, lastly, the diameter. The diameter of that, uh, uh, you cannot directly using the mass flux diameter. Uh, we have to, to come up with something else. Uh, first, we have to come up with, imagine that there is another, another nozzle here somewhere. Okay, that has the velocity equal to uh, CA, uh, sorry, equal to uh, a sonic velocity at A, and having an exactly the same uh, mass velocity as the one in the point A. That's why we can uh, put this value M here, and then we will be able to find out what will be the exactly the area of the nozzle somewhere, imaginary nozzle somewhere. Uh, uh, so we find out the area here, and then to find out the area of section A, then we use the area ratio of uh, section A to the, uh, uh, to the uh, area of the critical point to find out the area of A, and then we uh, then from the, uh, the area we can calculate what will be the diameter at point A.